All right, welcome back. And um, away from high blood pressure and the health situation, we will now look at high blood pressure. Well, not the blood, necessarily high blood pressure, the blood pressure, whether it's low or high in Cross River State politics is what we're looking at. And in this one, if there are symptoms of any problem in the, in the politics of Cross River State, it's also a silent one too, because many things have happened on the ground as they prepare for a by-election also too. We're going to have a resource person during the discussion, but when he comes on board, we'll look at some of those issues, which we began to talk about yesterday around the issues of rotation and zoning something that people have talked about, which we said earlier on, and many, many times people haven't de defined what exactly the rules are. They play by the local rules on where they think, for example, the, the governorship of a, of a state should be headed, and the, the three different senatorial districts. Uh, that's where we've had, and oftentimes, unfortunately, certain people feel marginalized. And it's, but the, well, part of the root causes you see in why they move from one party to another party, and why they have the crisis in the parties oftentimes is when they feel that everybody isn't uh, taken care of. You know, Sean, many times if you ask the people the question whether or not they can get all of the stakeholders involved in the, in the party satisfied, like the all versus yeah. Congress, is a major discussion point. Uh, a major discussion point oftentimes, uh, Sean, when they say that uh, we're, calling the, we're, calling, we're calling for a stakeholders meeting and every single person who is in that stakeholders meeting cannot have his or her own say. But, uh, my 50 Cobra, 50 Cobra thoughts on this one. Yeah. We now have, I understand, Alphonsus Oga Eba, who is the chairman of uh, the All Progressives Congress in River State, uh, Cross River State, rather. We to have you join us on the show. Good morning. My pleasure to be with you. Good morning. Excellent. And uh, always a pleasure to have you join us. And, um, Thank you. First and foremost, I, I would want to get your reaction to what is happening in Cross River. But I thought rather than start with Cross River, let's look at the national convention or may not or will happen or whatever date it will happen. It's a, it's a party in a state of crisis. People have described the APC or you think it's a misrepresentation of the fact. Let, let me commend the leadership of the May Malaboni Caretaker Committee for happening to the heartbeat of cross Riverians and uh, delegates from Ondo, Plateau, and Imo State. I recall that uh, prior to that meeting of the CEPC, I wrote a letter to the national leadership notifying them that cross River State and few other states will be having by election on the 26th. And it will amount to disenfranchisement if we are not allowed to participate in the national convention of the party. And I am glad to announce to the world that what the leadership of May Malaboni has done and the president of the Federal Republic is highly commendable because they have just hacked into our heartbeat. The postponement from 26th of February to 26th day of March, 2022, is welcomed, is commendable, and I salute them. We are very happy. All right, now let's go to uh, your state, Cross River State, which, I mean, when people talk about a state that uh, when you enter, you have some kind of peace, you enjoy the people, are warm and nice, and it's a beautiful place to be. I've been to, uh, you know, one of your uh, areas in the past, but we hear that all is not well within the APC in the state, uh, not only between the APC, uh, but also the fact that the governor had to defect from the PDP to the APC, and so the politics changed since that time. How true is this? Let me just correct the first impression and say that not all is not well. Everything is very, very well now in the APC in Cross River State. The party that all is not well is the other party. I don't like mentioning them to give them on the deserved a publicity. But while it is not well with them, it is itself and, and deceive themselves, which is actually a. An acronym of the party, Papa Deceive Between. All is not well because four factions have come out critical issue 
which was made very clear while we're still there till 20th day of May, that has to do with which of the senatorial district that was going to succeed His Excellency, the governor, was not just an agreement in terms of morality, it was also properly and legally documented and signed by all major stakeholders. I am happy. One man that can never deny that assertion is Governor Lee Limoke, who by the every calculation ought to be the leader of the party, except that today that leadership has been taken to uh, water state and uh, it is being controlled from there. So all is not well within them because I think at the last count they have about four factions. For the APC, we have not just a united party in the state, we have one leader that is the leader of the party in the state and the leader of APC in the entire South South Blue political zone, where I am the state chairman of the party. Everything is well. And we are going into an election on Saturday that will show how well we stand. And you can only call me back on Sunday to see the smile that will come out of me because in law with equity looks as done what that which ought to be done. The election of Saturday is like a concluded for gone for all because we are prepared ahead of time. All right. Um, and we, we look forward to calling you after the by-elections. And um, I, I, I want to share your optimism, but there are a number of people <laughs> who are also uh, pessimistic about your party's chances, who say that your, your party has jumped in the process of how parties organically evolve, having to walk through from the bootstraps up. Because you have the governor <laughs> now in your fold, uh, it gives the party the, the semblance of having walked through things. But we know he moved from the PDP to APC. You think that if, going by what people say that uh, Cross River State is still a, a PDP state because of the number of organs the PDP controls from the Senate to the State Assembly. Uh, it makes whatever ambitions you have with the by-election and other elections as being just, uh, as being a, a vague, um, vague perception of success. You think that's true? You see, when a man has reduced himself to a child, what a child does more is to dream. And so when people dream about issues that are male phantasmagoria, I don't want us to waste our energy to talk about it. Yes, perhaps today you have a, a number in the National Assembly as House of Reps and Senators and uh, one occupant in Cross River North. I will never call that one a senator because I cannot explain how Section 285, Subsection 13 of the Constitutional Federal Republic of Nigeria can be so rich and you call that person a senator. We don't have a senator there, but we have some few House of Reps members, both in APC and some in the a a PDP. But come to the House of Assembly. We have 18 members, why they have six. We have 18 local government chairmen and 196 councillors covering the entire state. Commissioners, major stakeholders, grassroots politicians, 32,810 polling unit structure in the entire 196 words of Cross River State, and you say it is an unrealistic optimism. I don't, they say the tiger does not speak of his integrity. I don't want to even say anything. Saturday and Sunday will just bring back the reality of what I have said. And only then we'll know those who are dreaming. But let me tell you, APC is the party to beat. We'll win our election in Akpabi State constituency. We'll win in Ogoja Yala Federal constituency. I am from Yala local government with 297 polling units. And I am the one going into that election for the Ogoja Yala Federal constituency, where we have that total number of polling units. And I can assure you, we will win almost in 97%. All right, uh, Barista Eba, you, when you assumed office as the chairman of the APC in your state, you promised to go on political evangelism. And there is no doubt that the entire South South before now, maybe we had Edo State now, uh, Governor uh, uh, Basaki has joined the PDP, but now your governor uh, really is, is, has gone to the way of the APC. How much of this evangelism do you think has permeated the people of Cross River State to the extent of accepting your party uh, if you want to tilt towards your optimism towards uh, Saturday? Let me thank you for being an ardent follower of my movement and my programs. It is true that when I came on board on the 16th day of October, I was divinely inspired 
to embark on political evangelism. And the message God gave to me to preach was peace, love, unity, and growth of APC. And you could just see the divine coincidence. When the governor came on board on the 20th day of May, 2021, the slogan of the state became socket to the center. You know the meaning of socket and plug. Without you plugging to the socket, there can be no current. What I have done in the last four months and few days is that by socketing and moving from polling unit to polling unit, from village to village, I have been able to increase the number of registered members of APC in Cross River State from about 300,000 to over 1 million today. I only went recently to take another delivery of fresh 1 million registration materials, which I will embark again on the second phase of my evangelism immediately after the by-election. What am I trying to do is to make sure that like Christianity and Islam that preaches peace, the next religion today is APC in Cross River State. And we are doing this because we want to maintain the peaceful atmosphere, which you have just alluded to about Cross River State, except that the interference of one man, one man outside the state who has created some slaves in the PDP in Cross River State has become a threat to our peaceful advocacy. But we'll continue with it so that people will see who actually is on the right track of what can engender peace, love, unity, and growth. And I am proud to say, as a political evangelist and the first of its kind in the whole world, I want to stand by that and I'll continue with that message. And that is All what right. was the key for the victory of APC in Cross River State in the South South and Nigeria as a whole. Barry Saeba, would you be referring to the governor of River State some week uh, who was in your state a couple of days ago and accused the APC of uh, really planning towards thwarting uh, some rallies planned uh, for Calabar and all of that? Would that be what you were referring to? Absolutely. I am talking about the governor of River State. His Excellency Governor Yesomi Wiki, who has refused to see himself as a governor and have decided to reduce himself to what an ordinary palace could refer to as a mototout politician. Coming to a state to threaten the peace and unity of a state. And let me give you this background so that the whole world will know. The youth rally in Cross River State was advertised as early as first week of January. And you can confirm this from all social media platforms. You, it will surprise you to know that even at that time, INEC had not released a timetable of the by-election we are talking about. So there would have been no political activity for anybody to say, we intend to do a rally on this, this, this day. All right. Uh, uh, Barry Saeba, if, as, even as you continue, would advise that while you're free to express your thoughts on any issues, we do not encourage personal you know, bat battery on the program. It's not what we are known for as an organization. So you can talk I about the issues. Um, Barry Saeba, can you hear me? Let me permit me to drop my comment on that, please. Yes, please. One moment, you, sir. You Before you proceed, day. sir, if you can hear me, Barry Saeba. That is supposed to take place in Ogoja, Yala. Eight hours from Calabar. All right. In case uh, you uh, you can hear me, Barista Eba, uh, would like for you to continue with your contribution without personal attacks on not just uh, the River State Governor but anybody at all. Let's talk about issues and not necessarily uh, personalities because we brought issues on the program. Uh, so please, you may continue uh, with your line of thoughts, uh, bearing in mind the advice I gave just now. Thank you very much. I'm just dealing on the issues now. And to tell you how they came to create crisis in Cross River State, that a month and two weeks ago, we had advertised to do a youth summit in Cross River State, got approval of all the security agencies. Two days to the day of the rally, they came up and approached the commissioner of police that they wanted to flag up a rally. The commissioner of police, in his own understanding, knowing that flagging up of rally, like we did our own on the 15th. No, the network has to behave this morning. OK. We sincerely apologize for the hiccup in the network connection. We were Paris shocked the highway that were coming for that rally. All 
sorry. Okay. Authority by me. Oh, and every other person to tell the delegates that were coming for that Congress to divert so that we don't have any clash. We have been under serious attack by foreigners into our state because perseverance that are in the other party have reduced themselves to tissues, have reduced themselves to packs to be used to pack baggages and deaths. And we are always saying that while he's trying to accuse the government of trying to forestall their rally, the story must be made very clear that they were the ones that came to see how they could create crisis because they were aware that over 30,000 perseverance were coming into Cross River Calabar to thank the governor. Today, you will follow our campaign programs, which we started almost two weeks now. They only started their campaign day before yesterday and have decided to follow us. Like yesterday, we went to Constituency 2 in Ukele. They fixed their timetable to create crisis in that same area. Today, we are going to another area in Constituency 2. They have not done Ogoja. The director of SSS in the stakeholders meeting advised them to go to a different location because our timetable was out before them. They said, no, they want to meet us so that we can clash. Right. These kind of things are not healthy for politics. Absolutely. We Al Alfonso Seba. Uh, uh, These absolutely. people are not ready for election. Right. And so, we want the Inspector General of Police, so, the DG of SSS, the IG of Police, and the right. whole world to know right. that the PDP elements in Cross River State are not prepared for election. They want to create problems. All right. So but while, while we keep our fingers crossed, and we hope that the election, uh, Alfonso Seba, the election goes on peacefully, and... Um, uh, everybody's able to vote without any incidents of violence because that's what we all want. Let me take you back to something you said um, where you talked about the APC being able to triumph not just in Cross River State but the entire South-South. Uh, I, love, I love the book Great Expectations and the saying in the Holy Week to whom much is given, much is expected. And you've got great expectations about the APC in your state. But if you look at the entire South-South, Alfonso Seba, and um, take away a dual state, you have Delta, you've got Bielsa, you have um, Cross River, you have Rivers. All of these states are in the control of the PDP. A bomb that did try when you had got to La move over to the APC, you know, uh, to run for the Senate. We also what happened. I mean, couldn't do much. Same for Bielsa State also too. Not much happened uh, when you think about the resources that was thrown into the, that state to capture it. And people are pointing fingers now at Cross River State that they could also have the same fate, even though you have an incumbent who has moved over to APC. What are your thoughts? The trend doesn't speak well. About Cross River State, like I said, the tiger does not speak of his tigritude. We have a litmus test for this Saturday. And only then you will come to understand how the political movement in Cross River State revolves. But let me tell you, the point of Cross River State is a very simple one. It moves with the government house. From the day Governor Yade left the PDP, PDP in Cross River State became a dead, body, a dead body that has long been buried, that is completely dead and is not capable of resurrection. What you see has been fidgeting is when, like when you, when you decapitate a reptile, you will see the body still moving. That is what the PDP in Cross River State is doing. But I can assure you, by the time we give the final burial on Saturday, you will understand what we are talking about because PDP in Cross River State is dead. Uh, we will not only win the by election, we will win the 2022 general election. I am sitting here by the grace of God you will interview me again as the sitting state chairman. We'll I definitely, do not just speak uh, of Alfonso Seba. Do not exist. Help, help, us, Hello. help us understand this. You, you, say, you say when the governor moved from uh, PDP to APC, APC became PDP. Is that what you mean? APC? No. I said the moment we moved, PDP died naturally in Cross River State. It was... You, you, had, you, had, the, you had the members of PDP move into APC. So it became, you simply, simply meant it became PDP in the real sense of it. No. The PDP that left into APC, I was a member of PDP. I know. I was one of the greatest political kingpins 
that was in PDP. I left now and I wear the insignia, I wear the nomenclature of an APC member, an APC state chairman. So I am just telling you that PDP does not exist again. I was carrying the mandate. Don't forget, I was the unopposed state chairman of the PDP and I left with that. So the man that is sitting there now is just sitting like an empty shell. Barrister Barry Eba, let's talk about the by-elections coming up on Saturday. INEC has said that it will be deploying the biometrics voter uh, authentication system, BVAS, uh, uh, against what we were used to, that the card readers, uh, so to speak. Uh, do you think that the electorates in the states, especially the areas that, we're going, that are going to be witnessing the elections, uh, really uh, have understood? Have you been able to sensitize the electorates on how this new device works? I thank you very much. I am one person that has been an advocate of electronic innovation in politics. While as director general of due process, I was among the frontline director generals in this country that keyed into e-procurement. I left the Cross River State Procurement Bureau today as totally compliant. The moment I came on board, and that is a secret behind my political evangelism, if you get it very well, as I was moving from unit to unit and meeting the people, I prepared their mind about the biometrics that was coming up, the BFAS, actually. And from the experience of the Anambra election, our people became even more aware. So today, an average prosperian in the area where we're going. All right, I think the next part. And from 1st of December to this moment, what we have been doing is for me to have been anointing evangelists from various local governments and they recruit more people to win souls for the party. And the message is to show them where you see the logo of the broom, which is a symbol of our party. That is where you will vote. And I am pleased to announce to you. And that is why I speak with this very strong optimism that we are set and we are going to win because almost everybody in every polling unit is prepared. All I ask of the security agencies is to help protect our votes. Because in the last few days, there have been influx of unknown persons that are not from our area into our local government in the name of joining PDP campaign. The security agencies themselves should investigate. I am speaking on national television. I have told them in the stakeholders meeting, if you see any APC member carrying any gun or machete, please arrest him. If I come to tell you, release that person, arrest myself. I uh, Barrister Eba, oh, the next people to come and stay on national television and say the same thing. They cannot say because they have recruited police, they have recruited criminals. But I want the police to investigate. Barrister Eba, uh, with uh, the, the cross words we're having from the uh, PDP and ABC in Cross River State, uh, APC in Cross River State, I beg your pardon, um, it's beginning to cause some kind of worries here and there because before now, elections went as such they should in Cross River State. Uh, don't you think this might have an adverse effect on uh, voters turning up on Saturday? That is why the security agencies in Nigeria must wake up and live up to their responsibility. You can just remember the ugly incident that happened on Saturday when the commissioner of police became aware that the PDP rally that they came to get approval was not going to hold in Okojayala or hold in Akpabu but in Calabar. He smelled rats and told them, please don't do that. He took his men with an armored personnel carrier to stop them. But they had River State say that he thought they were going to stop this. Rally. Yeah. It's, uh, the uh, governor of a state came into another state destroy the institute that are not good for our politics. And that is the appeal I make to the Inspector General of Police, that the governor of River State is not beyond the law of Nigeria. I recall in 2019 how he was shouting from both ends of his mouth, talking about intimidation by the GOC then. Please, what he doesn't want to happen to him in his state, let him not import to another state. We are very peaceful people. I'm an advocate of peace. But you should know that there is a limit to where our people can endure this because if you get to a point where you get to a man's house and begin to beat him, even people will come out to sympathize. Okay, now let, let's now uh, focus on the people that really nice. matter. Everybody, that is. 
They should, I am begging, I am begging the security agencies, I am begging the governor of River State, stay away from Cross River State. He said he's coming back on Thursday again, and he's coming and wants to come in with the thousands of youth from Cross of River State, from wherever. There are no voters in Cross River State. There is going to be no movement. INEC must ensure that there is no movement because that is the extant rules of electioneering. The security agencies must ensure that any strange person found in any polling unit must be arrested. That is all I beg for. I want our votes to be protected. The okay. life of every Crossiverian means so much to my party and to the government. All right, we are at the state and at the national level. We do not want to intimidate PDP, but we will not allow PDP to intimidate us. All right. Because they are not even in number. We have tolerated too much. They have been They have gone into our campaigns. They have destroyed our vehicle during our rally. During the rally in Akpabu, they went into fight. I have been exercising too much restraint. But I all appeal right. on national television. Governor Yes on weekend should be called to order by the IG of police. He has all become right. a security Bar Bar threat. Bar 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 I think, I think your voice is heard already. Let's shift focus to the people uh, who all the parties involved, even aside from APC and PDP, are trying to really serve because that's what's supposed to be. So let's go to the elections that are holding Ogoja Yala Federal Constituency as well as uh, the Akwabuyo State Constituency. Uh, what would you consider to be the topmost issues in the hearts of the people of these constituencies and how do you think that for instance uh, they should be taken care of should your party be voted in what the people of Ogojayala needed so much was that the road that traverses through the entire north should be done that when i was head of procurement that was the only message the people of Ogojayala told me to mention to the governor as I speak today, 78% of the road being dualized now. It used to be a single lane. It has been properly dualized now. We are almost at the end of the Yala axis. The axis from Bekwara to Banliku has been done, completed. The people are very happy. Today, Cross River North, where this election is holding, has been properly industrialized. The first vitaminized rice mill factory is already in Ogoja. The concrete roofing tiles factory is already in Yala. The automated block molding factory is already in Yala. The yam floor factory is already upcoming in Yala. And the vegetable oil processing mill is already in Bekwara. The granite shelling milling company is, I mean, factory is already in Bekwara. The Canadian Standard University is in Obudu. An airport project upcoming. A systematized world uh, 21st century. Modern hospital is already in Obudu. Uh, and every facility you I can, can think can, about. I can, I can imagine. Today, human right. capital development in Cross River State, right. where over 7,000 youths are right. on the payroll of the state government, I, I and can, over 20,000 youths ever. at the local <laughs> government. And with the governor in the youth rally coming up with a security special scheme, again, that will engage over 30,000. These yeah, are the right, yearnings right. of Cross Riverians that the governor has met, and all the people are going to do on Saturday is to say thank you by expressing their support by voting for APC. And that is why I speak with this realistic optimism. I, I, I'm sure you, we could go on and on and, um, you know, reel out the things that have happened with the Ben Ayade government. But of course, it's a matter of conjecture. You hit the streets from Calabar to uh, Obudu and um, all the major parts of Cross River State, they probably will have a different story, but it's for them to say. Anybody that what, has what a different story say? should sit down with me side Good. by side. Right. Uh, I was supposed to say about, you know, I said, I said, you know, everyone is entitled to their opinions. So they probably will have a different opinion. They could also be in support. There also could be those who don't think uh, that the current governor has done so well. Well, what, what are your thoughts in terms of zoning? There's a fantastic story we hear about Donald Duke, clearly Moke, Geshon Bassi, having sat down the two, 24 years. Uh, those people have said it's a fiction of people's imagination. You've had the governor, uh, Donald Duke, who's coming from the south. You've had Leili Moke in the central. Uh, the current governor from the Northern uh, Senatorial District. Uh, people are saying now that um, zoning is such a big issue and the current governor uh, wants to turn facts on his head and not respect the zoning system gentleman's agreement. What are your thoughts around zoning for the governorship of uh, Cross River State? Let me say this to you and I want to be quoted. Zoning is not actually a problem in APC. Zoning is a problem 
that has become a cancer now that is eating the PDP. When you hear the latest language in Cross River State, Naira for Naira, dollar for dollar, Jigeri Pokeras, it has to do with four different irreconcilable groups in PDP, with one saying that the zoning order which started from the Southern Senatorial District under the leadership of Governor Donald Duke in, from 1999 to 2007. And when the pattern started from Governor Lee Limoke from 2007 to 2015, and finally, when the current position that led to all political parties zoning to the northern part of Cross River State, where Governor Ayade emerged, and that tenure will end, in 2023. Now, even when they had their own agreement written, and when morality even agrees with that, that because the people of Southern Senatorial District have been waiting for 16 years, power should ordinarily go back and start from there. Today, again, I tell you, in the same vein, Governor Wilson Wiki has his friend called Senator Sandy Ono. He said he wants to make him governor, even against that zoning, clear zoning principle. But that is not our cup of tea. The monkey's diarrhea is no concern for a human being like me. So let the PDP deal with their own issue. For us in the APC, the governor on the 16th day of December, during a rally where we're welcoming some political gladiators, was asked a question, what his view is? And the governor said that he recalled that in 2019, he met with the leadership of the Southern Senatorial District when he had serious threats from the Central. Senator John Awaneno was the person then who came to cut short the second tenure ambition of the governor. And like a political mathematician, the governor went with all of us and we went before the Southern Senatorial District and appealed to them that if you support us and the governor completes his four years tenure, after four years, the governor will hand over to the South. What the governor did on that day was to show the man of integrity that he is, was to keep to his political fidelity, and he made a pronouncement that after he in power should return to the South. When the governor expresses an issue that is just, that is fair, that is equitable, that aligns with morality and common sense, I think it does not require any other person to oppose it. But as a party, what we are going to do is to give all stakeholders an opportunity to meet at the state caucus where that announcement of the governor will be given the proper flesh, will be given the proper blood, so that whoever feels dissatisfied, we will be able to explain the reason for that. And I am sure the book of Romans 13, 1 to 7 is very clear that we must subject ourselves to the governing authority. And so in subjecting ourselves to that, the governor has spoken. He has given a direction that is fair and just. I expect all, right. all party members to please, in the interest of peace, also align because zoning is not our problem, it's a problem of PDP. All For right. us, all the right. zoning to cross river south is almost very, very fine. All By right. me, Alfonso Zagaiba. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with Alfonso Oga Eba, the chairman of APC in Cross River State. Uh, in case you've just joined us, you've missed out on this, but you can go and watch it on our website. In the meantime, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission will be conducting by-elections in Togoja, Yala Federal Constituency and Akpaboyo State Constituency on the 26th of February. Uh, so once again, we want to thank you so much for being part of the program, Barista Eva, and we wish you the best. Thank you for this opportunity. All right. And I urge all perseverance from that area to please all right. vote for thank you. Thank, thank you. you thank much. you so much for being part of the program. We'll take another break. When we come back, it'll be time for us to forge ahead uh, on this journey to 2023 when Nigeria hopes to get uh, leadership right in this country as we continue with the initiative put together by Silverbird Group, uh, which is uh, the Nigeria's next CEO, 2023, after this break.